welcome everyone. As I mentioned, we've got some people really from all over the country and I appreciate the time. I think you're gonna find this very exciting. I know I'll I found it very exciting. I'm gonna share this information with you. More, many people have known me through uh, real estate investing through a company called Renatus, which is a great, I think the best real estate investor training program available out there. So many of you have been connected with me that way. This is really the only second time that I've really announced this to everyone as far as my meetup group and my YouTube channel and my uh, Facebook groups. So welcome, we got a great turnout and I uh, do appreciate the time. So just a quick background on myself before we get started. I know a lot of you know me, some of you don't, you're hearing me for the first time. I was a teacher and coach uh, back in Michigan, uh, right out of college. I loved what I was doing. Um, but I loved the coaching more than the teaching. So I moved into educational publishing and was blessed enough to become the vice president of the sales of the division of three different publishing companies. But during that time, while I was a VP of sales, three times my position was eliminated. Two companies merged together. They only needed one VP of sales. We were bought out by another company. Their VP of sales stayed on, obviously. And in 2008, I was with a company that laid off 300 people the same time. In real estate investing circles, we say it this way, job security is an oxymoron. Because by definition, if it's a job, somebody else is deciding whether or not you're working the next day, whether or not it's secure. So whether you're a real estate investor or looking at uh, real estate as a brokerage model, I really would invite you, even if you love your job, to consider other revenue streams. You can never have enough revenue streams, especially in this economy that can change in a heartbeat, right? So uh, I've been a real estate investor now full-time for quite a few years. I don't know the exact number of deals that I've done. I always say I just thank God and praise God for every one of those. I'm working at multiple flips right now, which has been my focus over the last couple of years. I've done as many as nine flips at a time. I'm currently working on six of those. Some of them are under contract already to sell. And then I'm a deacon at my church, which also takes up some of my time. And I'm a licensed broker. So that's the information on myself. My email address is down there at the bottom if you want to contact me. Uh, one nice thing about being self-employed and having your own business is that uh, I can dictate my hours. I'm asking you to please honor that 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Sunday's my Lord's Day, and I'd like to keep that uh, for family and faith. Okay, so let's get on to this. What is this about? So what I had put in there before, and most of my audience here tonight has a real estate investor background, which you may or may not, depending on your experience, who invited you, but many of you do. And I want to look at this. Why are people attracted to becoming real estate investors? Many people that aren't want to be. Why do they want to be real estate investors? Why do you may want to be a real estate investor? What attracted you to it? Well, for mo the most part, people want to be able to set their own schedule. They want to earn leveraged income, so they don't want to just get paid only when they're working. They want to also get paid when they're not working, right? That's leveraged income. They want to be financially free. They also want to create a lifestyle of their dreams. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be the richest person on the planet, but that means that whatever their lifestyle is, whether it's take a many, vaca many vacations during the year, spend a lot of time with family, set your own schedule, a lifestyle that they want to dictate for themselves. And then also many people want to do it for the money to give back to others, contribute to the church, contribute to good causes, contribute to things that they're passionate about. That's another reason. Also, they want to be, even though they may or may not want to admit this right away, but they do want to be admired and respected for their success as a real estate investor. And also they like to plug into a system that's been proven. They're not, you know, reinventing the next internet phenomenon, they're plugging into a system, real estate investing, they're plugging into a system that's proven and that works. So if you think about those things, why people want to be a real estate investor, how does real estate investing really accomplish this? And I'm laying the groundwork now for the title of this presentation, which is really a shift in the industry. So I want to establish a little bit about the industry and about real estate investors. Okay, so how does real estate investing accomplish these goals? Well, we always call it the ideal investment. I is for income, D is for deductions, E is for equity, A is for appreciation, and L is for leverage. 
So income, everybody understands you can either flip a property, you could have rental property, you can wholesale properties. So that's how income comes into play. Deductions could come from, if you own the property, it might have depreciation, but you also as a real estate investor and business owner have hundreds of tax deductions that are not available to a W-2 employee. Equity, people understand if they buy a property and they pay off the debt, or if the property increases in value, they're increasing their equity. Appreciation, appreciation, most people would uh, understand and establish that any 20, 25 year period in real estate, prices have gone up on the average about 5%. That means sometimes they go down and down market, sometimes they skyrocket up. What about leverage? That's what people love about real estate is leverage, leverage income. Leverage means if I wanna buy a $200,000 income property, I don't have to come up with all 200,000. I could come up with maybe 20%, 30% and get a loan for the rest. Or I can bring on partners that have money and I could leverage their money and do flips. So usually if I'm doing six flips, I have very little money in any of my own personal money in any of those flips. Sometimes I don't have any of my money, it's all leverage. So that's what's attractive about being a real estate investor. And many of you that are on the webinar tonight, you understand that's, yeah, that's what attracted me. That's why I wanted to do it. But I wanna propose this. I want, I invite you to consider another alternative to accomplishing these exact same things, these things that we love about real estate investing. Because there is a paradigm shift that is happening in the real estate industry that is providing this ideal opportunity. And if you act fast and uh, are able to embrace this and, and focus on it, I think you'll accomplish exactly the same things as your real estate investing is doing. And it's not a one or the other, it's a both. I will always be a real estate investor. But let's look at this ideal opportunity that you also have. I'm gonna show you with a, a new paradigm shift, a new business model, how you can produce the income the deductions, the equity, the appreciation, and the leverage. The opportunity that you have is a result of an industry disruptor. An industry disruptor is a company of movement, uh, an invention that changes an industry. And if you wanna look at examples of an industry disruptor, just look at what's on the screen. Look at Blockbuster. They were the king of movie rentals. There was a blockbuster store in every single major city and most cities of any size, there's multiple locations. I remember going there weekend and week out, going to get uh, movies for my son. Well, it wasn't long um, after a little company called Netflix came about that blockbuster had to file for bankruptcy because of technology. They were a disruptor. They were able to deliver the movies without having to go to the brick and mortar store. Without all that overhead, they could produce them or make them available at a, a lower cost and still be more profitable. Not only did they change just movie renting, but a whole industry, the movie industry, you know, the production, they have their own production companies putting out their own content. So it's just amazing what they've done. And it didn't take long at all for Blockbuster to be king of the hill to filing for bankruptcy. Look in the retail space, and the example here of Circuit City, but there's, you can name a lot of different retail stores. That Amazon was this company that started out just selling books, and all of a sudden they moved into other items, and they significantly, um, had a significant impact on the retail market. If you look at people, why go to a store when I can just order it online and I can get it the next day delivered to my doorstep, right? So that was the disruption, that's the industry. And again, they did it from technology and a delivery system. So now let's look at real estate brokerages. They have been operating the same way for years. I guess the big invention was years ago when the MLS went from a print version to online. That was like, oh man, look at this, the big change in the industry, it's online. We can actually see a listing um, the next day or instantly without waiting for the book to be published again. I mean, that was the big change, but you know what? There's a bigger change that now has happened that is totally changing that industry. And just to give you, I, I kind of did a little research just before we started. I wanted to see according to the National Association of Realtors, how many houses were sold in 2019. Between the new houses sold and existing houses, it's about 7 million houses. 
if you think about the cost of each house, I just said, well, what if the average house was about 200,000, there was a 5% commission. The average commission is $10,000 on 6 million houses. If you do the math, that means that there was approximately 60 billion, that's with a B, 60 billion in realtor commissions paid out. So we're talking about a huge industry right now that is changing that I offer to you as considering that you may have an opportunity here for yourself. So let's look at this company called eXp and how are they revolutionizing the real estate industry. So what they've done is their technology, they have developed actually a company uh, called Verbella, actually they developed this, but eXp was so impressed with the company and the technology, they bought the company. So eXp International, which is on the NASDAQ, they own Verbella. And, and as you can imagine over the last month or two with the COVID, how many contracts they've gotten from the government, from uh, higher education, from school districts, from businesses that want an online solution for their meetings. So they've developed this technology and they've also done a decentralized model. So if you look at the, the current broker model, think about the city that you're in, the suburb that you're in, how many real estate brokerage offices are there? How many Coldwell Banker offices? How many Century 21? How many Remax? You name it. Think about all the money that those companies are spending on their overhead, the brick and mortar model. That's the blockbuster. <laughs> That's the blockbuster model, right? This company is the Netflix model. This company now has a decentralized way to provide services. In doing so, they've cut down the overhead because they don't have franchise fees. They're not confined just to local, their local resources, their local training, it's all national. They have um, all types of incentives then for growth. And then also they're not limited then by just their own technology, right? Think about it, if you have a franchise, and I was looking at actually starting my own uh, real estate brokerage from scratch. I would have to come up with all the infrastructure, all the training, all the technology, right? Well, do you think all these brokers, even if they're with the same franchise, you think they're sharing all those things, all their little secrets, all the best practices? No, it's a very decentralized model. So if you look on the right side of the screen, you'll look at what eXp is doing. They have a cloud-based environment. There's no desk fees. You know, they don't have to have brick and mortar. They have a decentralized system where there's one state broker. They only have to have one state broker in the whole state of Illinois. If you're in Illinois, I you know we've got people in other states and everyone can operate underneath that brokerage license, right? That cuts and eliminates a lot of costs that now can be passed on to the brokers, the agents. And by the way, I'll be using brokers and agents kind of interchangeably in, in uh, Illinois, there's brokers and then there's managing brokers. But in other places like um, Florida, for example, there may be agents and brokers, right? So it's the same two level uh, system, they just have different names for those. So we also have, there's live training. So this company has live training 50 hours a week that they can provide where a local little franchise could never provide that much training, right? They also have real time support they have international collaboration. So this company started in the US, they're now in Canada, uh, the UK and Australia, and they're about to launch, I think it's like four countries. Is that right, Dan? I can see in there. So, five. Five, okay, well, who's counting? Four or five, yeah, <laughs> great, great, five. Just so you can see the international expansion is huge. And obviously what separates this and what attracted me too is they have an equity, a powerful equity opportunity within the company. So look at the growth, and if you're smart and looking at any opportunity, you look at growth, and you look at growth patterns. You can see just a few years ago, they, only had, they were only in the hundreds of brokers, and now they've just exploded. They nearly doubled last year. If you look at that 2019, at the end of that, I mean, you're at you know, 15,000 brokers. They're, they passed three, uh, they were at 15,000, they passed 30,000 brokers already this year. So whenever something like this happens where there's a disruption in the industry, 
the people that get it jump on early and then things just explode around there. So look at the growth. Here's a showing about the international collaboration. So this business model allows you to be one of the first agents really to start sponsoring somebody in a brand new country. So you don't not only have to think, can think nationally now, you can, you can think internationally. So let's talk, let's go back to that because I, I wanted to frame this within the real estate industry and most people on the line, like I said, as, as a bro, as a, I'm sorry, as a real estate investor, uh, so I want you to think about that ideal, that acronym again. So income. So as a real estate broker within this brokerage, new brokerage model, you can get commission certainly on the sales that you have, uh, have transacted with your clients. But also this company has basically like a wholesaling model. So you people that are bro of our investors will, rem will know what I mean by wholesaling. Well, you get something under contract and you don't buy it, but you assign the contract. Well, this is a little bit different model, but you can, it, it functions the same way. You can actually quote wholesale it. You can get it under a listing contract. You can present it to the I buyers, which are institutional buyers that in order to qualify, have to do at least a, buy at least a hundred houses a year. And you could just broker it to an I buyer for cash and make a commission on it. And if that I buyer fix it up and flips it, you get the listing when they go to flip the property, which will probably be worth at least twice as much when they go to flip it. So income, we understand that as a brokerage. Deductions, just like a real estate investor and business owner, you are a business owner and you are qualifying for all the hundreds of deductions that you'd qualify as a business owner. Equity, here's what's unique about this brokerage model is that this company allows you to be an owner of the company. I've heard stories of other agents that have been the top producers with Keller Williams and other agents' uh, brokerages, and they didn't own it when they left. They had nothing. They had no ownership in that company that they helped build. That's the mistake of an employee, building something for someone, someone else, right? You now can build this for yourself because you will be an owner of this international company called EXP International. So when you do your first transaction, a year, you're going to get a stock. When the people you've sponsored, when they do their first transaction, you're going to get stock. When you become what's called an icon, you're going to get whatever you paid into the brokerage, you're going to actually get that back in stock. Plus, every transaction you do, when you close, you can designate 5% of your commission to go towards stock at a 10% discount. Think about that. Even if the stock stayed the same and there was no growth in the stock, you just made 10% on that money because you bought it at a 10% discount. Appreciation. So that's something that's important. If you're going to build a business, if you're going to be a real estate investor, you're looking for the possibility of appreciation. You have that same opportunity. You may not be owning a building, but you're owning a business that can appreciate. And this, and I didn't update the stock. I haven't changed or this slide. I haven't uh, check the stock lately, but when I did check it, it had risen from $10 to $17 very quickly with all the contracts that they had on the technology side of the business. That's a 70% increase in your money. We're actually at hundred percent. We just cracked $20. Uh, oh my goodness. Two hours ago. <laughs> oh my goodness. Get in before, before you, you don't know the, um, a hundred percent increase in your money. Can you believe that? I've been a flipper a long time. I, I attract investors for 30 or 20, really 15% um, on a particular project. A hundred percent. That's incredible. All right. Leverage. And this is, I didn't want to be a, a uh, self-employed broker. All right. It did not appeal to me whatsoever. I don't want to be self-employed. I don't want another job. If you're a broker without owning the company or a business model like this, you're a real estate broker, you are self-employed. You only get paid on your own efforts. That's the definition of being self-employed. You're being paid for your time or your performance, but it's your time and your performance. What a business owner is, a business owner is someone that gets paid on somebody else's production, somebody else's time, and or a system. So they get paid on a system. You hear about internet marketers, 
internet businesses, making money. That's a system. They are business owners. They could be playing golf today and they could get a paycheck in or a electronic payment in their account tonight. I mean, that's what a business owner is. And how this company has accomplished that is instead of the traditional model where climbing up the ladder, and Dan can kind of talk about his track, career track, where he was headed. So I won't go into too much detail, but just to let you know that normally you have to be in the state of Illinois, a broker for two years at least. You have to take then more classes, and now you can open up a brokerage. I don't even know if that's good. That means now you maybe have to buy a building. You got to spend all this money, this overhead, but that's where you start to build the team. With this business model, you can build a team the day that you start in the brokerage. You don't have to get a managing broker's license. I tell people this, how would you like to get paid like a managing broker without the expense and liability of a managing broker? It almost sounds too good to be true. You've got the good part of the business and not the bad part, right? So that's the paradigm shift that I'm talking about. Now let's talk about what really got me excited. I would have joined this company after I had already got my LLC set up to open up and, and own my own brokerage and hire a managing broker until I got my broker's license. I was well down that track until I saw this. My broker, the thing that I was gonna offer in that brokerage was not even as good as just this one thing and that's revenue share. So here's the revenue share and then I'm gonna put some numbers to this for you guys. So. With this business model, anybody that you sponsor into the brokerage, you're, gonna, you're going to earn revenue share, and, and the, the key word here is revenue. Keller Williams has a model that, that pays tiers like this, except it's based on profit. So if that franchise doesn't make a profit, you could have 100 people doing real estate deals that month, but if that franchise doesn't make a profit, you wouldn't get anything on it. Um, I know Brett Gove, I've heard his video. He talks about building eight years of building within Keller Williams. And he got about, you know, $600 a month is about all that he had earned because it was a, it was a profit share. They would only get paid if they made a profit. Well, think about it. If you're a business owner and you have to pay out more money, if you make a profit, aren't your books tend to show less profit, right? And reinvest in your own business. So this is a revenue share. And what this means, if you're looking at here, tier one means that you're gonna get paid 3.5% of the commission is gonna be paid to you on every one that you personally bring into the brokerage. So again, day one, you could be like a managing broker and bring somebody into the brokerage and get a revenue share on their production. If they get somebody, that's level two, if they get somebody into the brokerage, it's 3.8% if you have at least five people that uh, you've brought personally into the brokerage. So the, the numbers on the left-hand side, this you'll get no matter what, the 0.2%, uh, the 0.1% on tier three, you'll get that no matter what. But to open up the big amount of your commissions, if you personally bring in five people to the brokerage, then you're gonna get this level, level two, full payment. If you bring at least 10 in, you're gonna get level uh, tier three, full, full commission on that. The next one, all the way down. So to max out this pay plan, all that you would have to personally do is bring in 40 people. And that may sound like a lot, but I've only been at this a couple of weeks, really focused in on exposing this opportunity to people. And you'll hear uh, from some of them shortly on the, uh, on the line here but I already have 11 or 12 people committed already. And it's only been really a couple of weeks since I focused this, uh, you know, my attention on this part of the business. So I had to put some numbers in it. I've said this before, if it wasn't, if it, it wouldn't be a, a Pertler meeting without a spreadsheet. So I just started thinking, what does this mean? So for someone to do what's called capping, that means they're a good broker and they've paid in the maximum amount to exp so to be a good broker if you make eighty thousand in commission every good broker i bring in on my first level let's say they make eighty thousand in commission that year i would make twenty eight hundred on each one of those what's called a capping broker if i only brought five people in 
that would be 14,000 on my first uh, tier. And if they then just brought five people in, each one of those five brought in five, they'd be 25 on my next level, right? Since I qualified at five, I get paid on the first two levels here. So I would have 14,000 plus 80,000. I'd have 94,000 of leveraged income. Think about that, leveraged income. That's if I didn't sell a single house myself or I didn't represent a single buyer or I didn't do a flip, I didn't do a real estate investment deal. That's pretty impressive, right? So you say, well, what if they're not good brokers that I bring in, they're average, they only make, let's say, $40,000 in commission? Well, we cut that in half and it's 47,000. But that's just two levels and that's if you just sponsor five and they just sponsor five right? Well, let's take this down a little further, right? Don't you want to get paid on three tiers? I do. And I assume everyone I bring in, even though sponsoring people might not be their focus, they're going to run into every other agents just in the course of their business. They're going to show a property and they're going to talk to the listing broker and they're going to have a conversation. How do you like your brokerage? You know, what would you change if you could change anything? Do you have ownership in your brokerage? Simple conversations can lead to them wanting to find out more about your business model. So let's just say 10. If you have 10 brokers, you get paid through level three, tier three. So if you get 10 and everyone else within that broker brokerage gets 10 and then they, they get 10, you just duplicate yourself. You would have 3 point, I'm sorry, $2.3 million in leveraged income. I would say that would satisfy the L in the ideal investment, the leverage, right? So let's look at some more. I wanted to look at other models. What if uh, they did the same thing, but they weren't great brokers. They were just average brokers, a little below average. It's still almost $1.2 million in leverage income. That's over and above your own sales. So you could, if you built a team like this, you could be at the golf course every day, be at the beach every day and earn this leveraged income because you leveraged your relationship, you leveraged your, maybe your training, your presentation skills, your networking skills, your social media skills. This is what it could lead to, all right? There's a quote, and if you're from Chicago, you may know this because there's a famous architect after the Chicago fire, he helped build what's really Chicago today. His name is Daniel Burham, and what he did is he had uh, a statement that was quite uh, long, but the part that most people quote is this, make no little plans, they have no magic to steer men's blood. What they're saying is if you want to get people excited around you, plan big, shoot for the stars, right? So I wanted to, what would, what would happen in this business model? Dreaming big, what is the potential? Because I want to be in a game that I can hit a home run. I don't want to be in a game that, hey, no matter how great you do, you're only going to make 100000 You could be a superstar in this business, in this um, you know, career, in this employment opportunity, and you're, you're going to make 100000 right? I want to be in something where you can hit a home run, where you can just explode and live out your dream. So, I'm going to have 40 people sponsored. There's a very good chance within a very short period of time, within a week or two, I may already be up to 20, halfway there. So I can really take that into my own control, right? I can kind of control my activity. So I put out this business model. I wanted to put the spreadsheet. What if I did 40? That unlocks all seven levels to the full commission. What if I did 40, but everyone on my team, everyone in my organization, only get two. I'm getting 40, but what if they only got two? What if they only got two? That would be 80 on the next level, 160, 320. You can see that still when, because they pay so many levels deep, it could still be 2,500 on the seventh level. If you add up all these numbers, we're at about, I think when I added it up, we're at five or 6,000, um, something like that, five or 6,000 people on your team. Well, there's somebody I know for sure that's got over 9,000 already. But look at the dream, look at the dream, the leveraged income that would happen besides your own production, selling, representing, being a real estate investor, it's over $7 million. If that doesn't stir men's blood, I don't know what does, right? Because it stir, does stir, stir me, 
gets me excited, gets me wake up, waking up excited. And look at, this is if they're only average brokers on my team. They're only average. They're not capping out. They're not getting $80,000 in commission. They're getting 40, all right? They're barely making a living. Still look at the potential. So obviously, it would probably scare you, but you know, if I put capping people on there, right? It'd be 14 million. Okay, so enough of hearing me and my excitement, right? What I'd like to do now is I'd like to bring out uh, a couple people, and tonight's gonna be a one-way presentation. Even these people that are helping me out, all I wanna know, uh, expose you to enough of it, do you want to come to a follow-up webinar that we'll do uh, Monday at 6.30 uh, p.m. that central time? So tonight I know you're just listen mode, but now I'd like to bring out a couple people that uh, are real estate investors, because many of you are real estate investors. The first two are real estate investors. The other uh, two are not real estate investors, but they all have different experiences coming into this. So, Diviani, are you available to come out? I know you were on a tight schedule. If you are, Dan, can you take her off mute or take yourself off mute? Diviani, are you, you hear there? Me? I, yeah, yeah, I'm off mute, right? There okay. you are. Yeah, go ahead. Kind of give us a little bit about your background, uh, how you found out about EXP, and then what do you think of it, and, and uh, what, what do you like about the business model? Yeah, sure. Well, um, so I, I, had, I, I have been a real estate investor for a few years, and before that, I, was, uh, I worked in corporate America. I, had, I was in um, direct sales. I was in different businesses. Doing, figuring out where I belong and what I want to do long term. And real estate has always been an in, uh, uh, interesting to me. Owning properties and having collecting rent is just something that I've always wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do any of it. And that's when I uh, ran across, you know, this, this group that taught about real estate investing. And that's how I met Randy. And uh, Randy actually um, helped me out a lot in the, in the beginning. He had already been a real estate investor for many years, very successful, had done a lot of flips and deals and rentals. And uh, he allowed me to partner up with him and do some deals together. And uh, not, I learned so much from that, as well as, uh, of course, made money. I mean, there's one thing about Randy's that you know, if, I, if you're going to partner with them or work with them, you're probably going to walk out a little bit uh, wealthier. So uh, that's what I learned from being around him that he does his due diligence and he, um, he uh, is, a, is a little analytical and, and um, makes whatever he brings uh, forward and whatever he introduced me to has always been really great and profitable. And so um, as a real estate investor, I, was, I, I, was, I did well and, and I still am you know, an investor. I have rentals and always looking for deals. And just happened to talk to uh, Randy, I think it was last week, um, we were having a conversation. It was Tuesday. It was Tuesday of this week. Tuesday? Wait, wait, what's today? Wednesday? Oh, Tuesday. No, last week. Yes. Tuesday of last, last week, week, I think. Okay. Yep. And uh, he, it just, I, I don't know. We just started talking about um, this, this, this business model. And I had never, ever been, I've never been interested in being a broker, like ever when I was just, I just wanted, I was a wannabe real estate investor. When I became a real estate investor, like it's not something that was exciting to me at all. It, it was just the way that he explained this business model to me just over the phone. I was so, so excited about getting started. I was like, this is what, what I've been looking for. This is the next thing for me. I'm so in. And then he's, he, you know, I saw this, this uh, webinar and actually I didn't even have to see it because I was like, okay, great, great, great. This is great. This is great. Just how do I get started? Because I already just knew based on just the conversation that I had with him. So this um, brokerage model actually changed my mind completely about just being a broker even. And I'm really thrilled about sharing this with people because um, there are agents out there. There's real estate and uh, there are real estate agents out there, right? And some of them are happy where they are and some of them are not. And if I just expose them to this, then they can see, okay, is this is a good, good opportunity for them. And for a lot of them, it's going to be a great opportunity. They're going to be looking for this. And I said, okay, 
I, I know I can share it with people. And I love houses. I love going to see houses and show people houses and talk about properties. So that's yeah. going to come naturally too. And people are always looking to buy and sell their houses. That's going to happen no matter what. So I might as well be a part of that. Right. So uh, I'm just, I'm like, I, I'm just a week in and I'm just so thrilled. Thanks, Randy. Yes. Yes. Well, thanks for sharing. And she's being modest. She's very successful as an investor. In fact, the training company we talked about, she's one of the featured investors on a video that they had. So they went to, you know, had a little, uh, little mini movie studio, like into her property and they videotaped it, recorded it. She's phenomenal. I'm really excited. Somebody like Viviani can just change things like instantly, you know, she's got the management skills. She's got the work ethic, uh, the connections, the personality, everything. And that's what you're looking for, you know, and you're what, what amazed me about the whole thing and us talking is that, and I told people this, we never had ever talked about this before. We have a conversation in the morning. We talk again in the afternoon. And by the end of the day, you're signing up for classes. You're all in. And like, you never even thought you'd ever, ever even consider being a broker. But yeah. like you said, it's all about the model, right? It's not about being a broker. It's about accomplishing the same things that we've been looking for as real estate investors, right? It's not that I want to own a building. I don't care about owning a building. I want the things that that can provide me. This model can provide you with the same things. And as you and I know, you don't have to put up with those darn contractors, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like the worst, right? Right? Yeah. So thanks oh for coming gosh. out. I know you're busy. We'll talk about that house uh, that we saw today later on. But thanks for coming out. I'm so excited for, for you to be on our team. I can just see some incredible things that you're going to do plugging into the system. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm thrilled. Thanks for letting me chat with you. Yeah. Guys. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I forgot who was on my list here. My PowerPoint went away. Where is it going to bring out? Uh, was Nietzsche next? Yeah. Nietzsche and Roland. All right. Why don't we do that? Neats and Roland. Uh, I'm trying to unmute them right now. Give me one second. For some reason, okay. it won't unmute them. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name's Roland. Uh, I'm Nitsa. Nitsa. Uh, I'm a managing broker. Had my own brokerage for eight years. Um, as Randy was speaking earlier, I probably spend on the on just the basics of the brokerage about close to $50,000 a year, just expensive, wow. trying to do lead generation and getting somebody to do the paperwork. And it was just an ongo ongoing ever forever, you know, training, but we, I had to do it all, you know, and, and get, had very little help. The one time uh, we grew to almost 20 agents and out of those 20 agents, they would uh, they'd just be on demanding from you and then taking out all, you know, the life out of you. And when I found this, uh, this opportunity, um, it sounded so great, but I didn't believe it. So uh, we flew down to Orlando and we met with Dan and Gil Ramos and we met there to see if, uh, you know, if this is real. And Dan probably can give a little bit of a story from, from Gil, you know, from his, uh, from his experience. And this has been life changing for, for us because now I can still be a realtor, but I can also do my second choices is be a, an investor. And now I have time for that because of all the training, uh, the paperwork is not there anymore for, for me personally, but they have systems for that. The lead generation is there. Everything that I've been working for, paying others for the website and all the, uh, SEO and, and everything that I did is all built into this. So it leaves me, you know, change my lifestyle because now I have mm. for life, not just yeah. sell and then go out and find the next sale and next sale. So it's giving me the, you know, the freedom to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And the dogs like it too. It sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Our dog. <laughs> yeah. She's a little pit bull. Okay. Yeah. So, so on my end, when Roland, uh, as he said, we were down in Florida, and we've been owners of uh, Front Door Realty uh, for several years, right? And so, as he said, the model where he, he was the managing broker, he trained people, they got the experience, and after two years, they would go to the Caldwell bankers, to the larger corporations, right? 
And so when he explained this to me, I said, oh my goodness, this can't be real. That means you'll be free. It'll free up your time. And we don't have to deal with all this paperwork. Because I was working a full-time job and like on Saturdays going in to help him because you know that he would only be able to get uh, like assistance and come in and out and there was never all this paperwork it was like forever that you, you just don't know but eventually when we saw this I said oh my goodness he's he says we could we could you know just get people on the team mm -hmm. still can keep our brokerage we don't have to close it down because mm -hmm. ESP will broker it and train our people. When they told me at the time, when we, it was like 40 hours, now it's 50 hours. My goodness, I said, oh my God, freedom. And guess what? The stock, we're developing. My God, I just had two closings. <laughs> I can't believe I just like had a lot. Oh, all the stock. It was like they threw candy at me, like here. <laughs> That's great. Totally, totally amazing. I absolutely love the model. Um, thank, I, I thank God every single day for finding this. We finally, that's something that we could say, we could cherish and, and build a trust for our, in, in, like an inheritance and, mm -hmm. a, and a additional retirement for us. Okay, and one more thing. The, um, a lot of people, while well, they were, uh, they were brokers in my office. They always ask for health care. Yeah. They always ask for health care. And that's another point that you might uh, we'll bring up later on. on. Yeah, maybe Dan can cover that. I don't know too much about that. I do know that there's a health care. Uh, so we'll let, let Dan speak to that. Um, well, thank you. So let me, I mean, yeah, think about this, people that are listening. Think about the work, the time, the effort, the money that Rowan had put into the brokerage. And you said you had at one time about, what, 20 some brokers, okay, brokers. And, and I almost feel guilty that I've started a couple weeks doing this, focusing on this, and there's a good chance I'll have close to 20 maybe by the end of next week. I mean, it's almost a crime, right? But you yeah. see, that's the old model, right? That's the old yeah. model. And you guys have what, like, you said, like 12 people or someone getting their broker's license ready yeah. to add? So you we, guys are going to like double have your... more. We've got like 20, 25 people. And Jeez. And that's only the brokerage part. That's not even talking about maybe over 60 to 70 leasing agents that he trained. Yeah. Okay. That's not including right. that. Yeah. Incredible. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys uh, were able to come Good out to and share everyone. with us. Yeah. And uh, so I see that Sarah is actually in the car, it looks like. Um, do you want to go now? Will it work better if you go probably go now and then you can get you'll be done with it and then Dan can go last. Are you okay with that, Sarah? Does that work for you? Yes, um, that would be great. Thank you so much, Dan. Is that okay with you? <laughs> you thumbs up. That's, that's all good <laughs> um, with me. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Okay, thanks guys. Um, all right, so uh, a little bit about me really quick. Um, so I used to live back in Chicago. I decided to uh, pack up and move to Clearwater Beach where I continue to work in real estate uh, without a network and without really knowing anyone, which turned out to be a little bit more challenging uh, than I thought. Even with a big uh, brand name office right down the street from me, I felt like I was lost um, in that brokerage. I've been with the XP Realty for a few weeks now, and even though my sponsor is Randy out in Chicago and my mentor is out in Orlando, um, let's just say it's uh, finally starting to feel like I work in real estate again. <laughs> um, so I'm actually on my way to uh, meet with an investor on a client lead that Nitsa sent me. So um, that's what I'm doing right now, and uh, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I'm excited for you. I'm very excited. And uh, the, the great thing, I mean, think about it. She can, she has her license here and she has a license in Florida and you can do that. You can go and you can build a team in another state. I sponsored Sarah and it's like opening up a branch office in Clearwater, Florida without any, any of the overhead. I want her to go nuts. I want to support her. I want to get her as much help as possible, but because her success is my success, right? So it's a great model to help. If you are one of those people that like helping people, this is the business model for you because you can help people and get paid on it. You know, you can leverage that. So 
Uh, I know you're busy. I'm so glad that you were. Hey, get to work. Get to work. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I'm here with my laptop out there. <laughs> leverage income. You're my leverage income example. So, great. Thank you so much for uh, staying with us, and um, we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you so much, guys. Take it All easy. Right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, Dan, go ahead. Yeah. Share with us. So I guess I'm here to kind of tie it all together with everything and, you know, these numbers that Randy puts up in these spreadsheets are fantastic, but the reality is how plausible is this, right? You know, mm -hmm. how, how realistic is this? And, you know, our story, Andrew Brooks, one of my business partners is on the line today and I'm really happy to have him here. He just posted something that even a year ago, we started with just 10 agents, right? So we, our history is that um, we came from the number one exit brokerage in the state of Florida, Right. We were the number one four years running and ran by Gil Ramos. He is the number one Zillow lead team from in the Southeast. So everything from Maine down to QS, he's the number one buying Zillow team, right? And this guy's won multiple awards and he was recruitment champ and training champ and, you know, all these wonderful things and helped jumpstart our careers. And, you know, as Nita and Roland were saying, everyone gets to a certain point where it's like, okay, you know, a 70, 30 split over an exit, you know, I've already learned everything I need. Let me move on to another broker that's going to pay me a little bit more or maybe has better tools and so on and so forth. So Gil was also running into that dilemma all the time. And I, I remember this, this day, this changing, defining moment for us. And it was a Christmas uh, sales meeting. So it was a December sales meeting. And he sat there and he said, now next year, I'm going to pay you all more money. And I kind of looked at everybody and I was like, how's, how's he going to do this? because he's locked into a franchise agreement. He can't pay us more money. It's not possible for him to do it. So I started asking Andrew, I was like, what do you think it is? And you know, we started chatting it up and I was never really one to recruit, to be quite honest. I always wanted to be a top producer. So I was really curious on how he was gonna pay us more money. Cause I was like, that benefits everybody, especially myself, because yeah, the thought had crossed my mind. I mean, I was loyal to a fault, but at the same token, it's like, if I could even get 10% more a year, that's, that's a lot of money for us. And, um, so finally I approached Gil, I said, listen, how do you plan on doing this? Because I know you're locked into this franchise agreement. So what's, what's the plan here? He said, hey, listen, we're gonna take the secret trip out to Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm gonna show you a new model and show you how it really works. And of course I was like, oh, skeptical, right. Okay, let's see what happens here. So we fly out to Scottsdale, Arizona, but I started doing my research in advance. And I started looking up everything the same way Randy does, the same way he showed you. And I was like, okay, you know, I see your Bella and the avatars in the virtual world. That's cool, right? I was like, it's like the Sims game from back in the day from the 90s, right? That we all yeah. had that we used to create these little virtual characters and run around except for it's for work. And I was like, okay, we own this technology and we're publicly traded. That's awesome. This is actually cool, cool items to have on top of the factual basis, right? Because if we're publicly traded on the NASDAQ, you know, we're audited on a daily basis, probably three times a day. So I was like, okay, so all these things so far are adding up and we fly out there, we meet all these wonderful people and every, the vibe is like almost like everybody's family right off the bat. And we get there and we had a mastermind with a gentleman that you guys will all probably meet at some point in time, Jake Kinder. And this man has sold over 5,000 homes in his lifetime with all his brokerages. And he had moved over the previous year, three of his major brokerages with his partners. And everybody had all these wonderful questions that I had already researched in advance. And I just had one question. I just looked at Jay and I said, Hey, so this all sounds cool, but I, I got to see your bank statements if this is true. <laughs> and everybody laughs. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not kidding. That's not a joke. I was like, I want to see the proof in the pudding. I want to see that this is real. It was like Wolf of Wall Street moment where he's like, you show me that paycheck and I quit my job. Um, so he shows it to me and I look at it and I look down and I was like, okay, $80,000 is cool. I was like, but you know, that's not anything to, to fret over in a year. I was like, you know, if I just moved to a bigger brokerage, I could probably do that in a year. And he says, Oh no, that's, that's not for a year. That's for, that's for this month. And I was like, oh, this month. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, wait, you've been with the company for a year and a half. And this is what you're making this month. He said, yeah. And I said, all right, uh, I quit. I'm in for sure. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like the defining moment. Right. And, and like I said before, I wasn't a huge recruiter by any means. I love to add value because I, I have a, a background in marketing and IT. So everything about this company from the CRM to the website to everything kind of tied in, it kind of was like the all in one package that I was actually looking for with Andrew. And um, Andrew wanted to build a team and build it more. And I was like, I don't want to be responsible for other people. Andrew and I came from the hospitality industry. I used to manage 600 employees across a few different restaurants. And Andrew used to manage several different Wawa's and all these employees. And so I was like, Andrew, we left that industry to not have to manage people, right? Because our next step at one point in time was going to be to either become brokers and open up our own brokerage and go through the heartaches that Nietzsche and Roland went through and spend all that money and throw all that money just to kind of maybe break even and have people leave us. 
And then, bam, EXP landed in our lap. And it was everything already laid out for us. I was like, wait, so you're telling me we get the advantages of basically running a massive mega team, which is sort of like a national, international brokerage. And I get to leverage all of their tools and their training and their assets. And I get stock and all these other things in, involved. And I was like, I'm in, that's it, end of story. Andrew and I started a team and now, and he just posted it. We're about to hit 100 people in our organization in less than a year. And, and to boot with all the stock and everything else that you know, Randy's gone over, but the proof is in the pudding. And, and to give you guys a little perspective and background as far as how long Andrew and I have been doing real estate, um, we've only been doing this for two years, like real estate all together. This isn't something that like we've been doing for the last five mm. years, the last 10 years. We started and got our licenses just over two years ago. I want to say two years and, and, and about three months ago, we got our licenses because we started at the exact same time. So this is all very plausible and very possible. And it's not like we have a great, uh, you know, support. We have a great support system, but we don't have the systems that Randy has, right? These calls are fantastic. We just recruit people as we go and occasionally reach out to a few people here and there, like the way Randy was, was, was telling you guys on that Excel spreadsheet. Like it doesn't take a lot, right? You just got to go out there and shake a few hands and, and meet some people. And half the time you're doing it with people in these transactions anyway, which, which is where we've gained a lot of our following. Once people see how happy we are, see the family vibe, the best shared practices, like Randy was saying, that's really what kind of the heart is that drives a lot of attraction for us. I mean, people are like, wait, is this really how happy they are? Is this really all the training and all the extras and bonuses they get? And then they start asking more questions and then bam, they're already with us. I mean, my sister-in-law, I thank, I thank her every week. I really do. Every morning I get up and I'm like, I thank my sister-in-law for dragging me into real estate because I honestly never would have been at this point that we're at in our lives cashing out at $20 a share, you know, if it wasn't for her. I'd still be working 70 hours a week. Who knows if my wife would have left me or not, right? At that point, not making, not making what we should be making. And it's really like, it's, it's just a shared effort of how this thing unfolds. And I'm telling you, we're here to support you guys. And it's very doable. It's not like we come from a background of, of, of recruitment or sales. Like we just come from a background of sharing and adding value. That's kind of what has really driven our team and our organization. And I'll tell you, it's been a fantastic ride and, and we're just getting started. We doubled down on agents. We doubled down on stock. A year ago when we joined, there was only, uh, just over a year ago, there was only 16,000 agents. We're about to double that. When we joined, the stock was less than $10 a share. We doubled that. And then that was, four, that's with four countries. That's with the USA, Canada, UK, and Australia. And now we're doing five more. And I really can't announce them here. I know Randy kind of was like, hoping I would. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that in the Q&A just because I, I okay. it would be insider trading if I told you guys this information out here like publicly like that. So in the Q&A, I can probably give away that a little bit better. But we're launching five countries this quarter. It's not like it's going to be next quarter or next year. And the reason we're able to start um, announcing more countries and move to more countries is because um, the VP of Reology, which owns Coal Banker, ERA, Better Homes and Garden, um, Berkshire Hathaway owns a few other different brokerages. He actually moved and he is now our expansion, our EVP, our expansion vice president of the company. And he's this man, Michael Valdez. Valdez. I tell you, this man is on fire. He's like five countries we're going to do this quarter. He's like, and then we're going to do another three after that. And he hasn't told us which ones those are going to be, but this man is on fire when it comes to executing and, and delivering on his promises. I can't wait to see what happens next year. Well, thanks so much for sharing. And, you know, I want to personally thank you. You've been so supportive. And, you know, I've been a real estate investor a long time. What amazes me is that you've only been in real estate two years. And anybody that's on the line that's not involved in real estate, because I know not everyone's an investor on the line, um, think about it. No matter what industry you're in, if you were to focus, just like Dan did, not only is he a top producer individually, he has built a team of 100, close to 100 people now. That could be you in two years. Uh, and I hope it's you and you'd have Dan and myself and Nietzsche and Roland, everybody else to support you if that is your goal. You know, this is not get rich quick, right? I mean, these are, this, this, is, this is a career, but it's a proven career. You know, think of, I mean, ever since I was alive, I can remember there was real estate brokers making money on transactions and helping people, right? That's not going away. The, the, the shift, you know, what I said in the, the, my announcement of this event, it's a shift in the industry that is creating the opportunity. And some people will sit back and say, hey, what happened? You know, I don't know what happened. And others will embrace this and they'll be riding this wave to the top. So um, 
Thanks so much for your support, Dan. You've always volunteered to help. And Dan will be on the line uh, again Monday at 6.30 Central Time. I know some of you are in diff different time zones, but Central Time, it'll be 6.30. And then also, uh, just before you leave us, Dan, I wanted you to tell a little bit, because I right now am just kind of sponsoring, you know, one person here, one person there. And I mean, it's growing really fast. But I want you to think about this, that you could actually sponsor an entire brokerage. Think about it. The brokerage down the street that has 100 agents, you present this and we help you present it to the right person. You could have 100 agents on your team overnight. I mean, it could happen that fast. So just exp tell us a little bit about, because I know not just your brokerage, but you know of other brokerages that have moved the entire brokerage over to eXp. So funny story, the only reason we're here is uh, a gentleman by the name of Carlos German. Um, this man was, we, we look at him like the first astronaut, right? Because he took the first leap of faith into EXP, in, at least in our area. And he actually took it about two and a half years ago, th almost three years ago. And he did it blindly. He just said, you know, this looks like a fantastic thing. Who knows if it'll work out? He dismantled his brokerage and, and kept obviously the organization and the name of everything moved it over. And little by little, he started reaching out to people and everybody told him no, everybody across the board. Until one day he approached Gil Ramos, um, who was our broker over at Exit. And he said, you know, I got this great idea. I think that, you know, this would really benefit you and your agents. And Gil being the recruiter that he was, of course, he took the meeting, right, to reverse recruit. And so yeah. he took the meeting and he said, yeah, absolutely. So for an entire year, him and Carlos, Gil and Carlos went back and forth, back and forth. And uh, Carlos actually hooked him with, inviting him out to some events that we have. And unfortunately, obviously this year, coronavirus has kind of halted that because um, we had, you know, Texas coming up with Tony Robbins. And uh, yeah, so he kind of hooked Gil with all these meetings. And then obviously Gil has a council, which I sit on. And, um, you know, he flew us out to one of these to just to verify, right? Because he wanted to make sure that it wasn't just good for him and beneficial for him. He wanted to make sure that this is beneficial for everybody across the board. We're basically all even keel. We're all on the same level now. And we have the same amount of expansion. And so Carlos really hit a home run and I'll tell you how. So by roping in Gil, Gil went and got a few of the head honchos in our area. So he didn't just get 120 agents off of, you know, our brokerage, right? What he did was Gil made a deal with a few other brokers in the area to all move at the same time and in the same organization to make a change, to really set a precedent for this company. So what Gil did was he reached out to Veronica Figueroa. He reached out to Todd Schroth and to Rebecca Josue Soto. And so everybody moved within a matter of three months. So we moved 450 agents in a matter wow. of three months. Wow. That's and, great. And, and I just, I wanted you to tell that story just so that they can get an idea of the potential, right? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you'll never, maybe you'll never sponsor a brokerage, but to know that you have that potential to know that that's out there and a real possibility and something that's happened before. Um, anyway, thanks so much for sharing. I want to close it out so that we're not too long, but uh, let me pull, pull up uh, pull up my PowerPoint and we'll just finish up here. So share screen. Let's go back to here. Okay. All right. So let's see if it's going to allow me to do it now. There we go. Okay. So as I said before, most people become agents because they want to be business owners, right? They want to, oh, I want to own my own business. So I'm going to become an agent. However, if an agent only gets paid on their personal work, they are self-employed, not business owners. Conversely, a managing broker with a team are business owners. Business owners produce income from the efforts of others and or the systems they implement. In this model, you have both. You have uh, the ability to revenue share on the production of others, but you also have a system to implement. So you have the best of both worlds. So again, a very simple statement that I ask people is how would you like to get paid like a managing broker without the liability, time, overhead, risk, and expense of a managing broker? That's going to get people excited and that's going to really revolutionize the industry. So um, I won't go into much here. All I want to really tell you about tonight is that there is an 80-20 split right from the start. You know, most brokerages out there is probably a 70-30 at best. Uh, so this is really good, great right from the start. Plus, you have all these other potentials to start up. There's very, very little 
barriers to entry financially. As a real estate investor, the best training program that I uh, am a part of, that I firmly believe in to get all trained, it's like $20,000 or more. Uh, this, the barrier to entry is very little. We can talk about that and we're gonna answer all the questions about the cost, but believe me, um, the cost is not gonna prohibit anybody to take advantage of this opportunity if they see it. Okay, so if again, you uh, want more information, you can contact, a lot of you were invited by me, but some of you were invited by other people. Get back with them and the same URL that you used, and I'll put it back out there again, but the same URL that you used uh, the Zoom for the Zoom meeting. We'll have it also live again at 6:30. That's Central Time on Monday. Dan will be there. Uh, I think Nietzsche and Roland will be able to uh, join us as well. And that will be the conversation. That will be okay. Here's how the marketing plan or the uh, pay plan works and the revenue share works. What questions do you have? And we'll be taking questions. There was just too many people on the line today to get through everything we had to and try to keep it at an hour. So with that being said, um, really, I I'm a firm believer in doing what's right and doing what's best for everyone. My prayer is that you, uh, now that you're exposed to this information, that you really think about it. You think about it. You pray about it. You think whether or not this is something good for you and your family. If it is, we'll lock arms, arm to arm, and we will march, and we will get this thing done. If it's not good for you, I really, I truly, truly wish you the best. And if that's the right decision for you, I 100% support it. Um, we will always be friends. I'll always be a real estate investor and I'll be a part of that community that we might have met at before. Um, if it's not for you, I totally get it. But I do, I, I firmly believe that you owe it to yourself to go to the Q&A. You owe it to yourself to at least consider it because like Viviani, she had no interest in it at all, but all the, it just clicked and she got it. She saw it and she saw the vision. So at least give yourself the opportunity, entertain the possibility. And then if it's not for you, then uh, again, God bless you. And I, I support you on your decision. So thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope to see you on Monday at 630 Central Time for the Q&A where we can personally have a personal conversation. So until Monday, may God bless and take care everybody. Bye-bye.